Okay, does anyone remember back in the good old days of Roller Coaster Tycoon? Those games were crazy fun, especially to a huge generation of 90s and 2000s kids who got to experience these games. Now, I'll be honest, I absolutely loved the Roller Coaster Tycoon games when I was a kid. Having your own park that you could just do whatever you wanted with, you got to pick the admission price, that was cool. Back in the day, there was Roller Coaster Tycoon, Roller Coaster Tycoon 2, Roller Coaster Tycoon 3, and then a bunch of like legal issues stemming from Roller Coaster Tycoon 3, and no Roller Coaster Tycoon game for a while. Sure, people moved on to other games like Thrillville and Planet Coaster, but what happened to Roller Coaster Tycoon? Well, in 2014, everything would change when Roller Coaster Tycoon 4 Mobile finally released. Now, here's the thing Roller Coaster Tycoon 4 actually came out after a remake or a remaster. Of Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 already had released on iOS, and this game potentially used a lot of assets from Roller Coaster Tycoon 3, and it was just a new Roller Coaster Tycoon game that originally started out as a pay to play game where you had to buy the game on like the iOS or Android store, but then pivoted to a free to play experience. And this game was panned across the board when it released. It was criticized because of its microtransactions and excessive wait timers in the game to try to get people to spend microtransactions transactions to speed things up along. There were features from old Roller Coaster Tycoon games that were not present in this game that came out like a decade later, and the music was not nearly as good as the old school music. I mean, listen to what this music sounds like for a Roller Coaster Tycoon game. This sounds horrible. For a game like this that has timers and microtransactions, you'd almost expect for them to like release regular content, and they wouldn't. Just very periodically, like years apart, there would be like a new ride added maybe. And the game would silently shut down in 2020, not allowing players to play it anymore. Even if you paid for the game, you can't get past the loading screen, so that's fun. So this game got us thinking. This game was a continuation or a spin-off of a beloved series from back in the day, thrown onto mobile devices and it wasn't good. There's a lot of game franchises franchises that made the big spin-off jump into the mobile game market. And a lot of the times when a serious established game series that already has a big fan base makes a jump to mobile games, sometimes it doesn't work out. And those are the games that we find to be sometimes the most interesting to take a closer look at. One of the worst examples that I can think of is from Ubisoft with the Tom Clancy series. Some of you might remember back in 2020, there was a game called Tom Clancy's Elite Squad. And this game was a mobile game experience where you had characters from various Tom Clancy games, like Rainbow Six Siege had a few characters in there. I remember Rook and Caviera being advertised, but we'd go into other Tom Clancy series too, like Splinter Cell and Ghost Recon. So here's the weird thing though. This was 2020, which was already a big year for a lot of social issues. And the antagonists of this game were an evil group known as Umbra. In a lot of the promotional material for the game, the world is essentially dealing with widespread unrest and protests. And these protests are being controlled by this organization, Umbra. And in a time where there were very real world protests and discussions about very important things in race relations and social reform, Tom Clancy's elite squad uses this as Umbra's big logo that's displayed all over the place to represent the protests and unrest. And a lot of people thought that this logo very much so resembles the Black Lives Matter symbol that is used. With a lot of the parallels from the real world universe to this Elite Squad universe, it suggested that the riots and protests are part of a big conspiracy theory, and the game was criticized for that. And the backlash made Ubisoft have to quickly release a press statement apologizing, and they announced they would be quickly removing the logo in the next update. There was a lot of discussion about this at this time, and one of the contract writers who worked on the game and was a part of the team that wrote the story for Tom Clancy's Elite Squad actually was disappointed because allegedly he was originally informed that Umbra was supposed to be like a James Bond villain organization, not something that looks like what quote Q conspiracy people think is happening. And man, this was just like a really big yikes for a game that already wasn't that fun to begin with. I mean, it was 
was a boring gotcha game with like repetitive gameplay and the biggest claim to fame that it had was like its connection to Rainbow Six and like Splinter Cell where people were like oh look I know those characters but was the game really all that good? I never played the game more than just a few minutes when it came out to see what it was about and I got tired of it quickly so I wasn't one of the people who was like sucked in and really just wanted to experience all that there was in Tom Clancy's Elite Squad so I don't know if you really enjoyed this game maybe let us know in the comments but the game obviously didn't do well because a year after the release of this game Ubisoft announced that they were shutting it down and the game had its plug pulled and uh, now it looks like Tom Clancy Rainbow Six Mobile is the future for Ubisoft on mobile devices and uh, we're just gonna pretend Elite Squad never happened that's probably for the better okay let's talk about Apex Legends for a second it's absolutely crazy that Apex Legends was hugely successful it was on all types of consoles and PCs and it eventually even came to the switch and then all of a sudden boom Apex Legends mobile is the next big step for Apex Legends and that was an exciting time for sure I guess for people who wanted to play Apex Legends on their phone and it looked like Apex Legends mobile was gonna be a really big deal with the amount of budget put into the game and the fact that they were going to be adding all the characters from Apex over Apex Legends mobile came out in February of 2022 initially and then saw a worldwide release a few months later but it wasn't really long before the announcement was officially made that Apex Legends mobile would be shutting down now surprisingly this news came kind of alongside EA making a lot of decisions to try to cut costs across the board but it didn't look like the game wasn't doing well after its launch sure it wasn't the main Apex Legends experience but it was a mobile variation of essentially the same game it seemed like it was kind of a surprise that Apex Legends mobile was being shut down as the development team was working on a season for the game and fortunately enough though the game would stay open long enough for that last season of content to be implemented in the game long enough for players to get to experience it and play it out before the season would wrap up for good but man it's never a good look when you have a game that is only really out for a very short amount of time before it's already falling under so here's to Apex Legends mobile you live for a very short time you had two unique characters that were only in Apex Legends mobile and never came to the console we still don't have them I still hope one day we get to see these Apex Legend characters that were exclusive to Apex mobile make the jump over to like the main Apex Legends game but uh, yeah, it's just weird that this game even existed. Remember how popular Crash Bandicoot was back in the day? And then after a while, Crash Bandicoot just kind of went dormant for a while. Eventually, fortunately, interesting Crash Bandicoot would kind of hit an all-time high again after the remake of the Big Insane trilogy. And Crash Bandicoot would be kind of riding out on a little bit of a new rejuvenated era for a little bit of time when, you know, Crash Bandicoot got a new game. There was Crash Team Racing. I think there was this weird game that recently came Came out that I still don't think was a good idea to make but with all that attention on Crash Bandicoot once again we saw the big release of Crash Bandicoot on the run which was a mobile endless runner game uh, developed by King which is under the Activision umbrella which makes sense essentially players would run through levels and defeat enemies and unlock more levels and cosmetic skins and whatnot the levels were procedurally generated and there even was like this whole multiplayer aspect this game actually started off pretty strong it topped a lot of the charts as it had like a full story mode and all this other stuff but the gameplay itself was okay I guess it wasn't anything fantastic it definitely wasn't better than like the newer releases of Crash Bandicoot but it was something kind of reminiscent to some of those running levels that you had back in those older Crash Bandicoot days so this game saw its worldwide release in 2021 right and there was periodic updates in the months following its release culminating to essentially the weirdest thing the introduction of the Noid being a boss in the game which is insane if you don't know what the Noid is that was the mascot for Domino's Pizza in the 80s and then like he had some video game spinoffs that were wild a lot of people hated the Noid there was a hostage situation because of the Noid the Noid games weren't good and over time the Noid became this mascot of a character that everybody just loved to collectively come together and hate it's really funny looking back at how much people really really hated the Noid. Now the Noid has appeared in newer media occasionally popping up when Domino's is trying to do some marketing campaign or something but it was not expected at all that the Noid this old video game character would show up in this random mobile Crash Bandicoot game. After the release of the Noid there'd be a couple smaller updates like a Halloween themed update and then after that the development team stated that the game would go on temporary hiatus for major updates because King the studio working on the game announced that they 
would be working on building new features for down the road and then that was kind of it. There were never any updates or new features. Just a little over a year later, the announcement that the game's servers would be deactivated in a couple of months. When they made the announcement, at the very least, they did close down the store so you couldn't buy any other things in the game. And I guess they just told all their players to try to make use of the in-game currency you've already spent and get it all spent up before the game will be removed and rendered unplayable. This one's just an interesting case study here because this game was hugely popular when it first released just to see a pretty big downhill trend leading to its abandonment later on. After the success of Nier Automata, there was two games announced in 2020 coming to the franchise. The first one was the remake of the original Nier called Nier Replicant version 1.22474487139. And the other one that was announced was Reincarnation, a mobile spin-off. Now, this game released in 2021, I think like it released in Japan first and then a couple months later worldwide. But while the game is still active right now, it's scheduled to end servers worldwide on April 29th, 2024. So in about like 10 days. And I think the reason it's shutting down is because the game was just not that fun to play. The gameplay was split between like three different things. There was like exploration, then there was like these longer cutscenes that would kind of scroll from left to right, and then there was like the battles, all tied together with this gacha system that, you know, I, I don't know, I don't think the gacha systems always work out. They're kind of annoying sometimes. But even if the gacha system wasn't an issue, I think the battle system itself was kind of shallow and kind of boring. You have your team of three and you move three downwards through like the battles right like you you will face enemies you defeat them you go down further defeat some more enemies until like the stage is cleared and you don't really play much the game kind of just plays itself and then your skills charge up and you can press your skills and then use your skills but it's just kind of like you clicking it's not that exciting also there's another point of criticism that i would see in a lot of the reviews and that was the progression being tied to the level of your characters so i guess you can't progress if your overall team level isn't above a certain limit and to increase that you know you gotta get better characters and use the gacha system and level them up so it just seems kind of like a bad concept for something that was kind of like a hack and slash rpg and was very popular because of that also fun fact this game's story is completely canon which is kind of weird that it's getting shut down now because you lose this big piece of canon lore i guess that you can't play anymore but also i mean it doesn't matter that much because i think the near games while they're vaguely connected they're all kind of contained within themselves there's just like loose connections to the other games usually they're like never direct sequels to each other and while the game might have been a commercial success and had a massive amount of downloads i think the player base died off pretty quickly because the game is kind of very very simple and it's not what near fans actually want from a game okay then real quick let's talk about halo because back in 2013 we were in a really weird place with the halo franchise now being held by 343 industries and it seemed very clearly at the time there was plans to make halo essentially a annual franchise with a new game release every year that had already pretty much been going on even under its old management of bungie i mean 2007 saw halo 3 2008 would have saw Halo Wars, but it got delayed till early 2009. And then later that year, we had Halo 3 ODST. 2010, Halo Reach. 2011, Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary. 2012, Halo 4. So what did we get in 2013? Halo Spartan Assault? What is this? Okay, so first of all, this game was a jump into the whole mobile platform, but this game would have things like achievements. So that's cool. Except when the game initially released, it was exclusive to Windows. Windows phones as an attempt of Windows to try to get people to buy Windows phones instead of iPhones or Android phones. And I don't know, what can I say about this game? It definitely doesn't feel like a Halo experience. Like, it's not first person or anything. And the third person type perspective here isn't really all that good. It definitely feels like a game that was thrown together rather than like a big AAA mobile game experience. And yeah, this is 2013 before we, you know, had games like Genshin Impact and stuff that were like rivaling AAA releases, but at times this game didn't even feel like a double A game. It would later see a release on things like PC and on Xbox down the road, but man, if you count this as like a mainline Halo game and you're playing through all the Halo games, this game is kind of like a real pain to jump into to play. I mean, it, it's basically fine. There's enemies you fight, you can throw stuff at them like sticky grenades, and you shoot the enemies, and that's it. Why this game exists, whatever. They were trying to do something, but then they made a sequel to it. Now, objectively, 
yeah, Halo Spartan Strike, the sequel, was better. Like, the gameplay felt more varied. The controls were a little bit tighter. There were still things that should have been in the game that probably would have really made the game feel like a deserved experience. Like, I don't know, it'd be cool to see multiplayer in a mode like this, but nope. And this version of the game did shoehorn the release into other platforms like Android and iOS, which the games used to be available on those platforms. They're not anymore, obviously. And oddly enough, Spartan Strike at least does something interesting where they have players playing as Spartans being trained in simulations of events that actually happened in the Halo franchise. So in a way, we get to go revisit set pieces like Halo 2 Metropolis, but in a new point of view or perspective and fill out the lore to some of the other things happening in New Mombasa during the invasion of Earth from H2. Thematically, story-wise, that stuff's kind of neat. The other half of the game has us back in the future playing as Spartan 4s again like Spartan Assault was. But at the end of the day, I digress. This game was a step up from the 7-Eleven Halo 4 promotional shooter game that they tried to release, but only by a little bit. And that's saying a lot. If you watched the Game Awards in 2020, you might remember that they announced Just Cause Mobile. And if you remember that, you probably never have seen the actual game. And that is because the game was actually shut down during early access testing in Southeast Asia. At first it was announced that the game was supposed to release in 2021, but after a couple delays and a scuffed early access, it was pretty clear that this game was going to be a big failure. Now right away when I looked at gameplay for this for the first time, I was like, what is this? This looks like some garbage. And I'm sorry if that's toxic, but to just cause games were like these fun exploration games where you like crapple hook or you ride cars, kind of like the GTA type vibe, right? And this is like some scuffed top-down shooter. And I can't help but think that the development of this game was only motivated by one thing, and that's money. And that's usually not a good combination because if they would just milk the franchise, then the game is gonna be bad. And yes, of course, the game would have been free and there would have been in-game monetization and stuff like that. And I mean, this game would have been dead on arrival anyway, so I guess the developers saw that and then they kind of went, yup. Let's pick it up, boys. Remember how big of a deal it was when Assassin's Creed finally released in 2007 and launched this brand new massive series for Ubisoft? Yeah, they also did a mobile phone tie-in that released on Android devices. Assassin's Creed for mobile. And uh, this one's interesting. You use like your physical keypad that was still attached to phones back in the day. This was right at like the dawn of smartphones by Android where a lot of them still had physical keyboards like the old droid variants. I actually really liked having the physical keyboard on my phones. I kind of miss them sometimes. And players navigate through this side-scrolling adventure, essentially playing through a lot of the plot points from the main Assassin's Creed game. This game's interesting. You can tell they put a lot of budget into it or thoughts into how they were going to translate the Assassin's Creed game into a mobile format. But once again, this game uh, doesn't look that impressive by today's standards, that's for sure, especially with this game being at the start of the smartphone era. I mean, this is very, very early early primitive smartphone era, but the game was for sale for a while still, and a lot of people maybe experienced it when they finally did get a smartphone. Now apparently this game also did see a release on like those older phones, kind of like we were talking about a little bit earlier on, so it was like this joint type release, so when they were developing the game they probably had to keep things limited so they could still run on older devices that weren't necessarily smartphones. But uh yeah, what an interesting approach to presenting Assassin's Creed in a different way, especially back in the day when Assassin's Creed was kind of a brand new thing like it's almost a risky play to just throw your IP that doesn't have like an established series or universe yet onto a mobile device but hey Ubisoft was in the business of making money and it was money that they thought that they could make with this it is interesting to see how far some video games have come because while this game definitely isn't like a mainstay nowadays and is still successful or whatever it is unique to see that there's Assassin's Creed Jade coming out for things like the iPhone in the future and uh, you can definitely see see how far, you know, development for mobile gaming has come in the last decade or two. I mean, look, essentially we went from this to this, and I think that that's really impressive. Payday Crime War might be the quickest shutdown of any of the mobile games we talked about in this video. The game shut down after just four months. Now, this kind of tracks for Payday because the franchise kind of has a history of having rough launches. And with Payday 2, at least they constantly updated the game and eventually the game was very good. But apparently Payday Crime War did not receive any significant updates during its four month tenure. Now you might be wondering, why did this game shut down so quickly? Why people hated it? Well, this actually wasn't a heist game. This was a four 
4v4 shooter with one team being the police and the other team being the heisters mixed with this weird like class system where there's like different units that each team can use kind of like Star Wars Battlefront I guess it just kind of was weird to make a competitive game for this sneaky stealth like heist game franchise now diving deeper into the development history of this game this game actually had technically been shut down before when back in 2019 they were running a beta and then they abruptly shut down the beta and they were like well we kind of cannot release this game yet we need to find a publisher and then eventually the game was moved over to a different studio and i think star priest ended up publishing it it was a mess maybe there's a universe out there where this game rivals call of duty mobile or something but uh at least not this universe but there's also some other games for older handheld mobile phones that release that were a little bit weird like the early days of games spinning off to weird mobile apps we did a video where we looked at all the forgotten call of duties and we found quite a few call of duty games that were just like tie-ins where there were these top-down shooter games that were a little bit weird but had extensive stories sometimes the lg envy phone had a guitar hero game that was a touch screen tap game and i had an envy touch way back in the day and i remember the touch screen uh not being that good uh reviews back then were actually relatively positive but um i think it was more just the novelty of being able to play Guitar Hero on a phone during the time when Guitar Hero hype was at an all-time high and uh I mean you're just tapping buttons at this point. Resident Evil Genesis released back in 2008 and this game somehow makes the original Resident Evil game for the PlayStation look like a 3D masterpiece and that game uh, didn't look that good back then. I mean it's a top-down walking around game there's zombies it actually stays somewhat true to like the Resident Evil's original formula but I don't know if this game really ever needed to exist i feel like even by 2008 standards it's pretty primitive so i don't know if i can get behind this one there was also a really old sonic the hedgehog game called sonic the hedgehog golf uh, and honestly, this game, it had a lot of potential. Like, the aesthetic looked cool, and I mean, we're golfing in a 2D side-scrolling Sonic level, looks like Green Hill Zone, and the music is Green Hill Zone, except I don't know how to explain it. There's just something off about the music, and I think it has everything to do with the performance. Like, I don't know if the technology back in the day was maybe good enough for what they wanted to do with a golf game that's supposed to look like something that would be played on a, you know, Sega Genesis. It's it seems like when you're actually doing something in the game, like trying to hit the golf ball or something, the frame rate just stops and goes very, very slow. Like you're watching a PowerPoint slideshow in seventh grade science class. I think this game was ambitious. It had a lot of potential, but I just don't think there was enough power in mobile phones back in the day to make this game uh, like good or like really memorable. But I mean, back in the day, they'd throw Sonic on anything. There was Sonic darts, Sonic fishing. I mean, anything. Nintendo actually has a little bit of an interesting history when it comes to mobile games games because for a very long time Nintendo didn't really do much with any of their intellectual properties on mobile devices. If anything Nintendo was kind of competing directly against those markets with their own handhelds so it made sense for them not to want to just throw out some quick game on you know a flip phone or later on iOS and stuff because they wanted people to keep buying Game Boys and DS's. However in the aftermath of the Wii U's launch Nintendo did start weighing out some of its options as to other sources of revenue and they decided to make a big push for putting games out on mobile devices. This is where we saw things like Mario Run or Mario Kart Tour. And one of the games released was Dr. Mario World, which essentially was, uh, you know, Dr. Mario, but like in an online mobile game format. Now it was interesting, right after this big push for mobile games, Nintendo also saw massive success with Nintendo Switch. So, um, you know, after a lot of the projects that they had been working on were released and out there in the world, Nintendo kind of just pumped the brakes on releasing any new mobile games for quite some time, more or less. But it seemed like at the end of the day, Nintendo wasn't too concerned with upkeep on some of the lesser performing games. And unfortunately, Dr. Mario World, a spin-off of the Dr. Mario games, which in a sense is a spinoff of like the regular Mario games, ended up being the first casualty to the mobile game market. And this was actually really disappointing. This game had microtransactions available and some people spent a lot of money on various features found in this game just for this one to get shut down. Another game that was hanging in there as long as it could was Dragalia Lost, which was also a Nintendo published game, but it wasn't a spinoff of anything. It was a fresh idea. And while that game held in there a little bit longer, it would also suffer the same 
fate that originated with Dr. Mario World. This one's a bit of a shame, because it's not like Nintendo couldn't afford to continue to support Dr. Mario World, they just didn't want to allocate the money for that. And I mean, at the end of the day, the game was fine, it just, you know, wasn't everyone's go-to. Super Mario Run was more of a full package if you spent money on it, and then other games would come out later on that would draw the attention more than, you know, a little puzzle game in the Mario universe. Okay, here's a really interesting one. All the way back in 1996, there was a game called Super Puzzle Fighter 2 Turbo. It was released for the CPS2 arcade systems back in 1996, and while it's not a sequel to any other game, it's just a straight up parody of Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. And ultimately, this game was like one of those block dropping type games. And this game, for what it was, was interesting. It later would see a Windows 95 port, and it would even get an HD remaster in 2007 for Xbox Live Arcade and PlayStation Network. It was a neat concept. It had some cool characters from the Street Fighter series, along with characters from other series as well. But I don't think this game was like necessarily as popular as Street Fighter, obviously, itself. I mean, I guess that part's obvious. But the game would eventually actually get a dedicated sequel in the form of Puzzle Fighter, which released on iPhone and Android devices in 2017. Man, what a time to be alive. This old game series finally back. Characters like Chun-Li, Dan, Ken, and Ryu are all here. There's characters from other series like Darkstalkers, Resident Evil, Dead Rising, Dino Crisis, and way more. I mean, it's a puzzle game, but this is kind of a cool homage to a bunch of different series. And I think maybe they should have just made a fighting game instead of uh, just bringing this puzzle game back. The game was not nearly as successful as what was anticipated, and the game ended up getting shut down just a year later in 2018. So rest in peace, Puzzle Fighter. You had an extensive history that culminated into, well, this. Another unsuccessful dive into the whole gacha genre was XCOM Legends, a spin-off of the popular turn-based tactics video game XCOM. Now this is a free-to-play mobile game that launched in March 2022 and is set to shut down in May of this year. So it's another one where you can technically still go and play it for a couple more weeks. Now this game is actually a sequel to XCOM 2 set two years after the events of that game. Now the PvE side of things, you kind of have your squad of five members that you acquire from the gacha system and then your characters have like different skills and you just kind of attack what's in front of you and then you move up and stuff. Pretty basic like turn-based mobile game style, I guess, but it also got that autoplay feature where the game just kind of plays itself. I think the fans of XCOM just really like that deep turn-based gameplay that XCOM got going for it, and this is the most shallow version of that type of gameplay. So it doesn't surprise me that this game kind of never had any hype behind it and is shutting down soon. Also, apparently there's like a PvP side to it, and I don't even know why this would need a PvP mode. Honestly, the whole game just seems like a quick cash grab to me. So we're about to get into our like little face cam pod podcast section and uh, I realized yesterday when I was recording my stuff I had the wrong mic recording so it sounds very scuffed I apologize but just pretend I'm on a zoom call okay so this next one is a little bit out there so I'm gonna ask Luke specifically about it Luke have you ever played you forgot the name of the game I was thinking if I wanted to word it that way or not I like stopped to think if that's how I wanted to word it (laughs) Leave it in the video, whatever. Okay. <laughs> okay. Luke, have you played Deus Ex before? Yeah, like way back, yeah. I don't remember which one, but I think the 360 title? I don't remember. Kind of like a, the old Cyberpunk before Cyberpunk was a real thing, right? Like a game? Right. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay. There was a Deus Ex Go for mobile phones. Go. It makes me think it's like a puzzle game or something. Really? It makes me think it's like a GPS Pokemon Go inspired thing with Deus Ex. Yes, I didn't even think about it, but I, you know, there's just like some, some mobile games that are called like Go, and then it's like a up on puzzle game right so you're actually onto something because it's a it, it is a series there's these series of games that are called like go there's hitman go there's laura croft go maybe i played the hitman go before and maybe that's how i remember uh yeah so it's like square enix's like subsidiary and then they get the license to do these things or whatever right so they also did deus ex go that game did not make it that was the one that died the other games hitman go and Laura Croft Go are still available. Deus Ex Go randomly got announced that it was getting shut down. That's weird because, like, when I played that Hitman Go game, I mean, this was, like, a while ago. I don't I barely remember it. I wasn't under the impression that this was, like, a life service game. I thought this was more like a complete experience on mobile. Because I think, like, you have to buy the game or it was on Apple Arcade. You have to subscribe to Apple Arcade to play it or something. That's what surprised me, too, because the other games 
did survive and continued to, or at least still on the store, right? You can go and play them. So I wonder if those are more full experiences, and then when they tried to pivot into the more top-down shooter, maybe live service? I don't know if the game was live service, but they announced that they were shutting that thing down. Now, this was back in 2022, they made the announcement, and when the announcement came that Deus Ex Go was being shut down, it also was being shut down alongside three other games at the same time. Which ones were they? There's Hitman, Sniper, the shadows which uh was a separate hitman spinoff not related to hitman go this game had like a connected story to the hitman universe where like agent 47 is missing and now you have to go on some missions as a sniper to to figure out what happened the game didn't last very long it was like rebranded in 2021 and by 2022 it was shut down was it like a fps or like a... no it was my least favorite genre where it's like a mix of first and third person so the game's in third person when you see your character most of the time and then when you scope down the sights it's first person the art style though was actually not that bad it was a little more like cartoony than what we see in like the main hitman games but i feel like it worked for what they were trying to do like it kept a lot of the colors and stuff pretty bright so i feel like this game maybe would have worked better if it wasn't on mobile phones i just don't think the audience that they were going for hitting the mobile game market with a game like this is like as hardcore and i think um that might have contributed to its its cancellation and then those two games got shut down alongside another game called arena battle champions and some space invaders spinoff space invaders that's crazy actually that's that's very random <laughs> space invaders hidden heroes i didn't look into this one but now i'm curious what that is i mean let me guess it's Space Invader. Do you think it's a hero shooter, though? Oh, no, no, no. It's just, it's very just boring Space Invaders that just gave it, like, some fancy name. A Space Invaders gotcha game? Well, like, you play, like, little different, like, UFOs out of the box or spaceships. Augmented reality? What is this? What are these? I was not expecting any of this to look like what I'm looking at already. There's, like, designed characters, which I didn't know Space Invaders had. And then it's augmented reality, so it's, like... The Pokemon Go mode when you had the camera turned on and like you would like see the Pokemon and it would drain your battery. I have to point out that it would drain your battery. Like, yeah, of course. It's like, what? Yeah, but it would drain, like nobody used it because it would drain your battery. Then I would mean, charge your phone. What do you do? Wait, is this even the same game? I might not even be looking at Space Invaders. I was looking at Overwatch games later. <laughs> I'm not watching Overwatch. Hold on. What is the game called again? It was one reviewing his Overwatch games from last night. No, 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 this is right. I am looking at Space Invaders Hidden Heroes. What I'm looking at is so outside the scope of what I think of when you think of Space Invaders that I had to double check to make sure it was in fact Space Invaders. That sounds crazy. It literally looks like a gotcha. I think it's a gotcha game. Oh yeah, I see the, this guy is filming like a can of beans or something. But who, what video are you watching? Is Shrin it Shrin Virtual? Yeah, Shrin I'm watching Michelle. the same video. <laughs> Do you see like the, the character, like the boxes with the stars and stuff like... Gotta get a level 5 pull and Space Invaders. I never thought, like, there was, like, character designs for Space Invaders. I guess I didn't know what to expect from Space Invaders. I mean, I probably made it up for this game. Like, honestly, I don't, I don't think... I don't know, I've never heard of this. Like, the, I mean, like, I don't know. Space Invaders iconic characters, what? Right? Dude, we should do a video. Top 10 Space Invaders characters. He got... He, at 17 minutes in this video, he got the character D-Volt. And he goes, bzzzt. That's, that's one from this... Very uh, creative space. This very games. creative scam, actually. Um, Maybe it's better that game shut down. Yeah. I mean, you know how last video, actually, we talked about how there's like a bunch of Final Fantasy VII games, right? Yeah, too many. There's, there's a lot. And one of them um, was a mobile battle royale game called Final Fantasy The First Soldier. Or Final Fantasy VII The First Soldier, I should say. Of course, it's Final Fantasy VII. The first, they can't just call it Final Fantasy, the first soldier. They have to get the seven in there. I mean, to be fair, it said in the world of Final Fantasy seven, which is different, right? It said like, is it a different world? I can never understand. Yeah, it is. It is. And it's like different city. So like, yeah, the setting is from Final Fantasy seven. So it's fair that they called it, I guess. But the game itself, when I look at gameplay, it reminds me very much of PUBG. It's like a PUBG style battle royale, like PUBG mobile style. Like, like soldier PUBG type thing? Like, I mean, it's called for a soldier. Did you not expect it to have guns? What's the difference between Final Fantasy VII and like the the fourteen that we played? Are they the same universe? Oh, well, it's like different dimensions, realms, universes. I don't know. I don't understand it quite. Because PUBG is like a modern shooter type thing. Sure, but there's guns in 
Final Fantasy fourteen too. I haven't played enough to know everything, dude. Later, you can become like a gunslinger and stuff. A gun? I was like, wait, I thought there was like wizards and stuff in that game. Yeah, I mean, it's both. It's like magic and guns, dude. I mean, like, do you think if like some wizard popped up today, people would just turn in the AR fifteens? No, you're right. So yeah, so like Square Enix ended up shutting this down because they were like, this does not meet player expectations. They just had like, I guess, a coming to Jesus moment. They were like, this game is kind of doo doo. And uh, so, yeah, they shut it down in early 2023, I think. And I mean, like, you know, AEA has been also getting in on the mobile game market, right? Like, obviously, you know, heavily. We talked about Apex Legends mobile earlier, right? Which was a game they shut down. But there was actually, like, a bunch more mobile games they shut down. Like, there was Formula 1 Mobile and MLB 23 or something. MLB Sports Tap, that's what it was called, was shut down earlier this year. And then, like, EA laid off a bunch of staff from those teams, right? So, they're, like, downsizing, you know, classic... Uh, Game industry layoffs, you know. Classic EA move. Just a classic, you know. They shut down a Project's Car mobile game called Project's Cars Go. It was shut down last year or two years ago. Actually, what year is it? Yeah, two years ago, 2022. Wait, here is it. And then this is the most interesting one or maybe like the most dumb one. But basically, there was a EA Sports UFC game, right? On mobile. And they shut it down so they could release EA Sports UFC 2. Hey... What a move. We're getting the yearly forced cycle on mobile now too, where they just shut down the live service mobile games and then release a second game for it. Was there also a Forza game at some point that was in that was supposed to come out or that did get out released? Forza Street, right? Is that still around? Did that get cancelled too? I think that got get shut down. Oh no. Rest in peace, Forza Street. But let's see. Yeah, it shut. Uh, okay, Forza Street came out in 2019 and it survived till 2022. A little under three years, actually. That's surprising with how big Forza seems to be. It's not that big because, like, these racing games are niche. It's bigger than Halo. It's better than Halo. That doesn't mean it's bigger. Forza's daily average. Forza. This is going to surprise you, though. Forza, Forza Horizon 5's daily average is... 12,000 players. Okay. Yeah. No, that's fair. Compared to Halo Infinite, Halo Infinite has 3,800 people. Why does it always happen that we start talking bad about Halo in these podcast sections? It just comes... Dude, <laughs> I mean, we already talked about Halo earlier, too. But Forza Horizon 5 is 12,000 people. Forza Horizon 4, the older one, has an, addi an additional 5,200 people. So it's like 1,700 people. And then whatever Forza Motorsport, is that the reboot? Is that a reboot? Maybe it's like a spiritual reboot, but I think it's just like... I mean, it's just like the racing game with the closed circuits, right? Not the open world one. Yeah, that one didn't is not doing well, comparatively. Because that one is more niche. I think the Horizon one is more arcadey, and so it's like a little bit more uh, like accessible for everyone. Because, I mean, that's the one I played. Right. So Motorsport uh, only has 500 people playing right now. And that's the newest one, right? Yeah, yeah, that's true. But they... There was some weird stuff with, like, the way they release it in the editions. I don't remember. Right. I'm seeing something weird about that, too. Like, it launched to only 2,000 people. So, yeah, Forza Street. That's what we were talking about. And we, <laughs> like, looped around. Uh, so they just shut it down? Yeah, in 2022, it looks like the... Uh... They refunded customers, apparently, though, so... Hey, that's better than a lot of the games we've talked about. I did a whole video on Rocket Elijah about... Uh, like, I, I went through and I tried to play every pokemon like mobile game that existed right i remember that and uh pokemon duel was an interesting one because that game was based on like some abandoned board game i think so there was like a, a pokemon board game in like 2007 2006 2007 that was like you had these figures and you would use the figures as a board game and like they did like a round of tournaments for like one year and then the game pretty much got discontinued and they never uh like, they, they stopped, like, releasing sets and all that. And then randomly, in 2016, they released it uh, as a free-to-play digital game called Pokemon Duel or Pokemon Co-Master in certain territories. And um, it's interesting because this came out during, like, the hype of Pokemon, like, the resurgence of Pokemon interest during, like, Pokemon Go and all of that. Yeah, they ended up shutting the game down in uh 2019 actually i do remember when doing research for this video i i, I stumbled across this game too but i wasn't sure because it's a pokemon game so it's always like i end up popular you know what i mean right i just don't think that the board game like format and the figure format is fun like i think at the end of the day like it didn't work back in 2006 through 2008 in a physical format and then they made a digital game and there was just better pokemon experiences to play out there the game wasn't that fun and then also there was like controversy around it because the game had to shut down early in the netherlands 
because the Netherlands passed a new uh, like law or something or a ban on loot boxes, and I guess this game fell into that category. So they just shut it down in that region first, and maybe with like more pressure to like stop games that were using loot boxes, which. To be fair, loot boxes nowadays in games aren't nearly as bad as they were. Yeah, but we're getting a rise of the gacha, sh gacha games, which is the same thing, just refundled, you know what I mean? It is, it is, it is. I don't respect it. And I mean, this, this is a gambling addict to me speaking, right? But the only good loot boxes are Counter-Strike. Like, because you can actually, like, get something out of it, you know what I mean? I can understand the gacha system, and I, I and I guess the reason why I'm not as offended by the gacha system is because we know Dim, right? And he plays all these gacha games. And we know for a fact this dude will not spend money on a microtransaction. This guy is not spending a single penny on anything. He is obsessed with these gacha games, so he doesn't spend money on anything, and he just loves it. So, like, that gives me this, this one perspective. But I remember, like, when Rocket League was really bad with their loot boxes, I hated the fact where it's like, look at all these loot boxes you've unlocked. You just need a key to get them open. And it's like, all right, like, <laughs> I hated that so much. It's like, then you have to buy sets of keys to open them. And then, I don't know. Well, at least with the gacha system, usually there's a way you can earn the currency in-game. And you can usually get a guaranteed pull of the character item you want. Um, but yeah, I guess I haven't... I haven't jumped too far into it. I'm still uh, trying to explore these gacha games for the first time now. Yeah, I mean, the, the guaranteed pull, but, like, the guaranteed pull, you also got to spend, like, a lot of money. Usually, it's, like, from my experience, right, to get the guaranteed pull, you got to, like, spend, like, triple digits on the game already. You know what I mean? To get into that realm. So, like, I don't know. I, I it's, it's it just sucks. I It's, like, over overpriced skin bundles. Crappy loot boxes or gacha systems, you know what I mean? I can't just buy, like, a nice skin anymore for, like, a tenner, you know? They're tagging old Benjamin nowadays. Uh, quick question. Do we have a sponsor in this video? I don't think so. Uh... Perfect, because I wanted to ask something. Uh-huh. Okay, one second. What's happening? I'm a little scared. I'm a little nervous. I wish I knew how to use my computer. <laughs> I guess you, I you want to come over real quick? <laughs> yeah, please. I don't know what I'm clicking on. You're yeah, gonna okay. be so mad at me in a second. Oh my! Yeah, I, but I, I have some idea for this. Is gotta be okay. So on the topic of gotcha games, okay. Yeah, yeah. I want everybody to add me on Snowbreak Container. Oh my! Teddy, God. I was going for Teddy Spaghetti, but I couldn't fit it. So it's Teddy, and then my UID is one one six seven one three eight five. I don't have any friends on here or anyone who wants to play this game with me, and uh, yeah, I had to make sure the video wasn't sponsored. I don't want to like promote some random game, but. Just getting that plug-in. Will you, will you play it with me, Luke? Will you I mean, get in Snowbreak finally? Yeah, dude, you told me to play Tower Fantasy, and that game is better, in my opinion. Well, we can play Tower Fantasy, too. Hold on, let me get my user ID on that, and I'll... <laughs> <laughs> also, like, I don't even know how we're going to play that game together yet. I don't think I'm a far enough. Dude, we'll hurry up and get on it, or else these other players will get on with it. There's a big update coming to Tower of Fantasy. It's called the Big 4.0 Update. They released a trailer for it a couple of days ago. It looks kind of good. Yeah, and I was just driving me insane with, like, talking about these two games. He's like... I just discovered the anime genre in gaming in gacha games. I... <laughs> That's how it goes on. It's like, 2 a.m. I'm laying in bed. My phone rings. And I was just like, Luke, Luke, do you think Snowbreak will shut down soon? I don't let it get invested <laughs> in it. <laughs> but it's doing good right now. Okay, my name is Teddy Space Spaghetti, UID 12021354922. I'm in the Glades uh, server. Okay, got that done. Glad there we got we go. that squared away. Perfect. <laughs> now I have no idea what we already talked about or where we were. Or like, uh... Um... Just, I don't know, just start talking about uh, the World of Warcraft. Okay, okay. Yeah, that was another Warcraft one we wanted to talk about. And Let's that's on topic to... of MMOs, so it's perfect. Perfect segue. Oh, perfect. Could it have been more fluent? Fluid? Flu fluid? Fluid? Fluent? Perfect. I don't know what the right word is, but let's go ahead. Yeah, the World of Warcraft one, um, so you know how they released uh, Diablo Immortal, and then more recently they released Warcraft. Like, I don't know, like a total defense Warcraft game, I forgot the name, right? And that was a third game that was planned, and all these are in cooperation with NetEase, right? Like the Chinese developer. But I think NetEase and Blizzard had a falling out in 2022, and the World of Warcraft mobile game, which was a spin-off, would have been set in a you know different time and different era area. But World of Warcraft was cancelled and had been in development at that point for three years already. So like there was decent progress made in it, but because NetEase and Blizzard couldn't you know agree on the money 
side of things, um, World of Warcraft Mobile died. So there was like a World of Warcraft Mobile game that released? No, no, no. It never released. It was canceled before. It's but it was developed for three years. It failed before it even launched. Right. Yeah. That's why it's like at the end here because it's like never really released. But um, it wasn't like shut down because like the game had development issues, right? It was shut down because of contract negotiations. That kind of reminds me of uh, like that Halo MMO that shut down. Like, they put a lot of development into getting, uh, like, Titan or something, like, worked on, and then it just got cancelled. That game looked so good, too. I don't think it would have survived very long, but I think it would have been a cool experience. Maybe we would have been able to get on, though, and, and play on, like, some community private server with, like, 300 people, like, you know, maybe monthly users or something. But that would have been cool. We'd still make Halo content regularly if that was the case. I don't know about what that one. Uh, <laughs> you know, I downloaded Halo last night. Yeah, I didn't just send me a screenshot and I was like concerned. I was, uh. You were talking to like two very big Halo guys for like two hours and then you start tweaking and downloading Halo. I don't know. I wouldn't say they were big Halo people. They're like insignificant Halo people. Not really. No, I'm not talking about the size and like content creation. I'm talking about like, this is their life. If you would say Halo. They'll be, they'll be fighting you, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, their personality. Their personality is Halo. I can see that. Yeah, uh, no, it just, President's been trying to get a lot of achievements, and I know where all those, like, really fun, easy achievements are at the beginning. Like, you can just go and grab, and they're fun to show people. It wasn't as bad as you think it is. But, you know, like, in, in Halo 3, you can go and, like, uh, like get an achievement for, for looking at the face on the moon. Right, right. Like, Very those easy stuff. Those are fun to, like, show people, so. Yeah, no, that's fair. We were, we were tired of Overwatch, so, uh. We decided to go and do that. Overwatch takes you to dark places. It's it's uh, it's rough. Then maybe I'll play rank J most of this. Really? Did you we we get on Xbox and play rank with me? Okay, I'll, I'll commit to one game for one rank. Game. Okay, yeah, dude. Maybe I have to call my shoddy first. But speaking of shoddies, make sure you guys are using our gamer subs code <laughs> to get your your fill up code rocket sloth. They give us a very generous cut since we don't have a sponsor today. Um, you want to support our channel and get something cool? This is a cool way to do it. You can get gamer subs. It's like energy. It's zero calories, zero sugar. You take a couple scoops, throw that in your water, shake it up. Tastes really good. I've been drinking um, the brand rest. I think it's the same one I showed last time. Uh, but Arctic Cooler's good. Guacamole Gamer Fart's good. There's a ton of good flavors. On top of everything, Elijah said they also have these cool cups that release limited edition usually, right? So you gotta be fast when they drop. But also, they have like a ton of merch. It's actually kind of nice. They have like a bunch of their shirts. We have mouse pads and stuff. You have the mouse pads. Sorry. I just fridge magnet. I got the mouse pad. When they were sending us stuff, they sent Luke this amazing, really awesome looking gamer subs mouse pad, like, like desk pad thing. And, uh... They sent me a magnet. I mean, dude, every time I'm over to I was located jealous of the magnet, I'm just saying. I mean, the magnet is cool. But I don't. I didn't game with mouse pads until like last week. Yeah, mouse pad setup is still scuffed though. It's not that bad. I have yes, ten mini mouse pads stacked on top of each other. There's a gap in between. Like this mouse just like stop. It's not that bad. Look, you can, I can, I can adjust as needed. You know, it's easy to clean when it gets dusty, and then I can just. Hey, how we did to you? They're animal. Crossing I'm only judging. Them? I think they're perfect. You guys in the comments, if you've watched this far into the video, rate my uh, my mouse setup out of 10. Uh, I'd appreciate it. And then it's a good way to tell us that you watch this far in the video. Okay, uh, I feel good about this video. I think we had fun. We talked about some interesting games. Uh, some of them were wild. And um, yeah, I think uh, I, I feel good about this. Anything you wanted to add? Very good video. I had fun. And the podcast was a lot of fun this time again. Yeah, so. Cool. And um, follow us on Twitch. We don't stream there, but follow us on Twitch in case we ever start streaming there. Link in the description. Alrighty. Well, uh, thanks so much for watching, guys. Uh, have a great rest of your day. Subscribe if you're new, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.